Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second video in a three-part series where I show you how to add a photos picker or choose and use a camera to take photos and persist those photos to a Swift data data store. In this video, you'll create a view model and a view for presenting both updates and for the creation of new objects for your data store, and then use the Photos UI Photos Picker for choosing a photo from your Photos album to either update the data property or insert a new one in the Swift data model. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in that last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that video. Make sure that you download the branch from video one. I've already started a new branch now for this video, and the completed source code for this one will be in that branch. Now I'm going to be using a technique that I use in a great many of my apps to use a single form view for both editing and updating an object. The first thing that I need to do is to create a view model that I can use for both of those operations. So let's create a folder in our app, and I'm going to call it Model Edits. Inside here, I'm going to create a new Swift file, and I'll call it Update Edit Form View Model. But we'll be dealing with an image, so I'm going to change Foundation to UIKit. And then I'm going to create a new class that I'll call Update Edit Form View Model. But I'm going to apply the at observable macro, as we'll want to be able to observe changes to the properties that we'll provide in here. So I'm going to use the same properties that I used in my sample model file. So the first one will be a name, which is a string, but I'm going to default it to an empty string. The next will be an optional data property. So those are the two properties that we have in our model. And we can also use a computed property that will represent our image. But this time it's not going to be optional. If we have data, we'll unwrap it using an iflet, and then another iflet to unwrap the UI image from that data. So if we're successful here, we can return that UI image. Otherwise, we'll just return the constants placeholder UI image. Well, if we're going to be updating, we'll be passing in a sample object. If not, we won't. So let's create another property for sample that will be an optional sample model type. So optional if it's a new object. It'll be non-optional if it's an update to an object. Now let's create two initializers. One that has no parameters that we can use for our view model when we are creating a new object. because the string will be a default empty string, and the data will be optional. But then let's create a second initializer that will receive a sample, which is that sample model type. And then we can assign the sample received to our view model sample, and then apply the corresponding properties to the view model's properties. So self.sample is sample, self.name will be sample.name, self.data will be our sample.data. Now we may want to clear an existing image. So let's create a function called clear image that will set the data property back to nil. Now this is going to be updating the UI potentially from another thread. So to be safe here, I've applied it here on the main actor. Next, we can create two convenience computed properties that will help us out when presenting our view. First, we'll have one called isUpdating. That's a Boolean. And that'll be based on whether or not the sample is not equal to nil. And the second will be isDisabled, which is another Boolean property that will depend on whether or not the name is empty. Well, now that we have our view model, we can create a form that will use this. 
So inside that model edits folder, let's create a new Swift UI file and call it update edit form view. We'll need to import Swift data. And this will be presented as a modal sheet. So to dismiss, we'll need a dismiss property for the dismiss environment key path. We'll also be updating or creating a sample object, so we'll need access to the model context. So another environment property for the model context key path that we can assign to another property called model context. Well, this view will need a view model, so we'll create it as a state property and pass in the model as we present the view. Then to stop our preview from complaining, we can simply pass in the one that requires no arguments in the initializer. So an update edit form view with the view model of the update edit form view model. Well, we'll want to use a navigation stack here. So let's replace the contents of the body with a navigation stack. And then inside the navigation stack, let's create a form. As the first item in the form, let's present a text view with the title key being name and bound to the view model's name property. Below this, we'll create a V stack. And then as the first term, if we have an image set already, we'll want to be able to provide a way to clear it rather than replace it. So let's check to see if the view model's data is not equal to nil. If that's the case, then we can create a button with the label clear image. And the action can be our view model's clear image function. And we'll set the button style to bordered. Below this, we'll create an H stack that's going to have two buttons that will be styled with a foreground style of white and a button style of bordered prominent. The first button will be for a camera. So we'll use a title of camera and a system image of camera. And let's just leave the action empty for now. We'll work on that in the next video. The second, however, will be a photos picker, which acts like a button. So first we'll need to import photos UI. Now I have a complete tutorial on how to use the photos picker in Swift UI. So I'm not going to go over the detail that is in this video. Instead, I'm going to provide you with a gist where you can download an observable class that you can use in any of your projects that follows this method I'm showing you here. If you're interested in the tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description. So simply visit the link to download and expand the zip file and drag it into the image picker underscore camera folder. Well, this image picker class can be used to pick single or multiple images, but we'll focus on a single one here. We see there's a property called image selection that'll do the work for us. And there's also a setup function that we must call when our view appears. So back in the update edit form view, we're going to create a state property called image picker that is an instance of this new image picker that we've just added. And then we can create a photos picker here as our second button where the selection will be bound to our image pickers image selection. And then we can just create the label. And then for the label, we'll use the string photos with the system image photo. Below the H stack, we can create an image using a UI image that is our view models image. We'll make it resizable, scale to fit, and we'll do that same thing where we'll apply a clip shape of a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 12.
and I'll add a little padding. Next, we're going to add an on appear block so that when the view appears, we can call the image pickers setup function where it passes in our view model. Next, we can add a toolbar to our form. As the first item, we're going to create a toolbar item where the placement is top bar leading. And then we'll simply create a button with the label cancel, where the action will be just to dismiss the view. We'll create a second toolbar item with the placement being top bar trailing. Well, this button will be conditional. So let's create a button and for the action, just leave it empty for now. But for the label, I'm going to create a text view. And if VM or the view model is updating, we can specify update, else we'll specify add. And then we can apply the disabled, the view model is disabled property to that view, meaning if there is no name, the button won't be enabled. To fill out the button action, then we can check to see if the view model is updating. If so, we know we have a sample passed in, so we can use an if let to unwrap it. Then, if our view model image is not the constant placeholder image, we can assign to that sample data property the view model image property as a JPEG data with compression quality of 0.8. Else, if it is the placeholder, we can set the sample data to nil. Then we apply the view model name property to the sample.name, and Swift data will automatically update both. Else, then we must be creating a new object. So we can create a new sample and make it equal to a sample model providing the view model name as the name. We can do as we did above. We can check to see if the view model is not equal to the constant stop placeholder, and then assign to the new sample data the view model's image using its JPEG data with compression quality of 0.8. Else, if it is nil, we'll simply set the new sample's data to nil. And then we can use our model context to insert it into the database. And then for both the new and the add update functions, after we've completed the action, we'll want to make sure that we dismiss the view. We'll work on the camera in the final video of this series, but we need to do one more thing, and that is to create a way to present this form using either the view model that passes in an object, if we are updating, or one that doesn't if it's a new object. So let's create a new Swift file and we're going to call it model form type. Inside here, I'm going to create an enum that I'll call model form type and it's going to have two cases. One will be new. And then another will be update that will have an associated value, which is going to be one of our sample model objects. Well, I'm going to change the import here to Swift UI. And then we can say that our enum conforms to both the identifiable protocol and the view protocols. The identifiable protocol requires that we have an ID property. So we can use a computed string property here, and then just say that it's the string describing self. That'll be a unique string for our ID. The view protocol says that we must have a body property that is some view. Well, we can switch on self, and then in the case of new, we can present the update edit form view, which requires that we pass in an update edit form view model. And there are two initializers, 
But for the new one, since we're creating a new object, there's no sample model to pass in, so no arguments. In the second case, where we've got that associated value, we'll present the same view. But this time, we'll use the second initializer. That's the one where we pass in that sample. So let me change this to sample, and then use it to pass into our view. We have everything we need now to present, pick, and update an image from our Photos album. So in the Photos list view, we're going to use the Add button in the toolbar to present the form that will allow us to add a new object and pick the photo. So we can use the sheet constructor that requires an optional identifiable item, and that could be one of our enums. It's identifiable. So let's create a state property called form type that is that optional model form type. And then for the action button where we're creating the new item, we'll simply set the form type to be new, which will trigger a sheet once we've created that. So we'll need to create a sheet where the item is bound to our form type. And that's going to provide us with a form type that we can use in our closure. Well, that form type is our enum that conforms to a view type. So all we have to do is use the form type itself for our view. And we can use shorthand here as well, just to simplify the look of our code. But we can do a very similar thing in sample view. Let's create an optional form type state property here. That's an optional model form type. And then in the action for the edit button, we can assign the update case. But this time we'll need to pass in the sample object. And then we can use that same shorthand to present the sheet exactly as we did in the last time where the sheet item is bound to form type, and we just use shorthand $0, which is our view. So if we go to our photos list view now, we can test this out in our preview. I can tap on the new button. I can enter a name for the image. I can tap on the photos button, and it brings up my photos picker, and I can pick from any one of my albums. I can click on Add, and you return to the screen with a new image in our list. If I tap on one of these sample items, I can tap on the Edit button, and I can pick a new image. I can change the title to reflect the image, like a waterfall. And then when I click on Update and click on Back, I see that the image has been updated and the list has been sorted to reflect the new sort order. If I select one of the samples that has an object, I can tap on the Edit, and I can clear the image. It reverts to the placeholder, and if we update back in the list view, it's gone. In the final video of this three-part series, we'll be adding the ability to take a photo with your camera by tapping on the camera button. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. And consider subscribing to my channel so that you're notified when new videos drop.